Howdy. Is it or can you hear me, Alan? Yep. I'm gonna Jennifer, find a better position. Are you okay, Jennifer? Can you hear? Can you unmute, Jennifer? There yeah. we go. Okay. Yeah, this is a, this is gonna be an experience, plus which my dogs have decided to bark at every leaf that's falling, you know, and they're so that's all right. I love dogs. But my dog will do the same thing. Hi. She has to be on my lap. You know, if I'm sitting down here, she's got to be at my lap. Hey, Darlene. Un unmute, Darlene, so we can hear you. Darlene, can you hear us? We're all searching for the mute button. <laughs> Still can't hear you, Darlene. Okay. And yeah, I kept clicking unmute and it said that the uh, host was not allowing the participants to unmute. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna see that. Let's see. Okay. I'm gonna change that setting. We're gonna get okay. this one filters. I heard your comment about the dogs. So if my dogs oh. hear your dogs, it's gonna be a whole choir. Yeah, this yeah, this this is a circus and I can't oh, oh how adorable. <laughs> rotten to the core. Absolutely rotten to the core. I saw Debbie Peppers on here, but she yeah, needs to here. unmute and open our video. Okay, I'm here with my volume and I'm trying to get the video going. We can, we can hear you, so that's okay. good. <laughs> One step. <laughs> okay. Well, keep trying. There, there we works. go. There you go. Okay. Hey, okay, well at least we have some participants. <laughs> And if your dogs bark and then Darlene's join the choir, Charlie will sing harmony. <laughs> I have two big dogs and I have them locked in here with me so that they don't go out and bark at the neighbors and every other, every other thing. Well, this monster just launches herself off of my lap to, to uh, you know, if a car goes down the street, you know, important things like that. Or the, when the neighbors across the street open their garage door, she is seriously offended that they oh. would have the, the nerve to do that. So she has to go wild. It happens three or four times a day. Well, our problem are the aggravating, I can't say the word in case Charlie's around, the little critters with fuzzy tails that climb trees. Mm -hmm. They will come sit in front of the window to aggravate him. <laughs> yeah, the people across the street have a bunch of cats. Uh, I think a, a lot of them are feral, and and they they sit on their driveway, and and my dogs can see them from the bedroom window, and that just that just drives her wild. So she. <laughs> okay. Cynthia, we can see you. Hey. Hey. Uh, how is everybody? Well, this is going to be an experience where how, you've got three dogs. Uh, I've got two dogs. Oh, two dogs. Okay. Yeah, I lost Dingo just recently, so I believe. So, so if ever, if all the dogs. <laughs> um, so mine, uh, those fuzzy things with the tails, we call it Squirrel Patrol, and, <laughs> and uh, they definitely think that they're in charge. So uh, my leaf can blow, uh, can blow across the street. On the sidewalk and they've got to alert me mm -hmm. so it's just what their job is and that's okay did y'all see the uh, um video i sent out today for the, the empty shelter did you did you see that on ailey's bike alan have you had a chance to you looked at it, right yeah it was a really good video yeah i think i think you did a good job long did a wonderful job yeah i didn't see it but the uh at the board meeting last night they were talking about 
was what, 338 uh, critters were spayed or neutered? Yeah. 309. 309. Yeah. 309. Yeah. 11 vets, 20 vet assistants, and students. Yeah, it was, I mean, it, it was, it was uh, in a big production. And, and uh, so that one, one vet I was talking to, she did 30, 39 in her shift. Wow. I mean, they got this down to, a, to, to a, a, an art. Goodness. Nice. To give you to give you uh, some perspective, uh, with 300 animals that are spayed and neutered, um, a hell, uh, can y'all hear me okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. A, a, a healthy dog can produce on average two litters per year, with an average of five puppies per litter. And in one weekend uh, of spaying and neutering 300 dogs and cats, that means in one event we can keep. Uh, 3,600 pets off the street of Houston in the first year alone. So, wow. 3,600. Know, wow. 3,600. When you multiply the five, uh, actually 10 births per dog, um, yeah, that's what it equates to. So, it's really quite a uh, important function that we've been able to bring to Ailey. And I know that uh, uh, Ailey Super Neighborhood is very proud to be able to do that. Hello, everyone. Hi, Barbara. Hi. This is morning, Randall, Randall Stewart. Hey, Randall. Do you have any dogs at your house? I'm sorry? Do you have any dogs? Uh, not yet. Not yet? Not yet. Not yet. Well, we, a lot of us have dogs, so we're, we're, we think that maybe if, if the dogs start barking, this will be an Interesting. Oh no, that's fine. A whole fire. A whole fire. <laughs> Randall, have you had? Uh, hi, Cynthia. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Randall was one of our don don uh, individuals that donated uh, to the Empty Shelter Project, so we're very happy that uh, uh, he's supporting Naily. So thank you. Absolutely. You're welcome. And we, we had all kinds of food. And do and you know what those kids went for first, Randall? The pizza. Oh. <laughs> that was absolutely the first thing gone was pizza. Oh, well, well I'm, I'm glad I could be of service. <laughs> Good. I, you know, I, I as I told you guys, when I first started coming to the meetings that, you know, whatever I can do to help, I'm more than willing to do so. Well, there's, they, they, they destroyed those pizza with pizzas within minutes. <laughs> oh, man. And Randall, yeah. within saying that, I've got your email and your phone number, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. And we're shameless beggars. Shameless. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I don't see. Alan, are you checking off who all's here for the for the... The, the candidates? I'm working on it. Okay. We're still a few short. Yeah, we are. Well, it's not actually 6.30 yet, so okay. they may be. Yeah, 6.20. They may still be coming. Yeah. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> there we go. One number one. Did anybody have any problems getting in? No, I, I got in just fine. Everything worked. I had to download Zoom again because my computer crashed last week. Huh. Mm, that's not uh, good. No. I got a note from uh, Zoom just a few minutes ago, and it said that in meetings like this, that I, I should do something different with security. So I didn't know any better. So I'm hoping that, uh, that <laughs> nobody crashes this meeting that I don't that I don't we, we don't want in here. Hey, Barbara. Yeah. 
Sometimes, it depend, depending on the type of Zoom you have, if you have more than a certain number of people, it, it limits you to like 45 minutes. Uh, ours doesn't, but we've got, we've got the, the super deluxe. Oh, great. We, we, we can talk all night if we want to. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, but, I, uh, you know, uh, you'd think after a year, I'd know all about these Zoom meetings, but, but <clears throat> there's always something to learn. There they go. There they go. <laughs> that was a leaf that went across the lawn. <laughs> Kitty. I have 631. Are all, um, Alan, how are we fixed for candidates? Are they all here? It looks like we're still missing unless they just came in. Damon, Greg, and Donald. Yeah, I don't see him. Here's Damon. I see your your chat, uh, Deborah. <laughs> you know, I haven't known anybody for a year and a half. They have their when they they have their masks on. I can't recognize anybody. My kids come in the house. I wouldn't know who they are. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I swear, when I get that mask on, I swear that I can't hear or 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 talk or <laughs> it affects my hearing and my vision. I believe a lot of people feel that way at the grocery <laughs> store. Haven't you all noticed when you're going through the grocery store, people just don't even respond to you. They don't look at, you know, like in the old days, the old days before COVID, we all spoke. Hi, how are you doing? Hello, passing by. They don't even speak. Yeah, it's like everybody's deaf and dumb. <laughs> uh -huh. I, don't, I don't know about you guys, but, you know, the biggest problem that I've had all this time was my, the fog that my glasses, they get so far yeah. and it was like, oh my God, I'm wiping my glasses constantly all day long. Yeah, that's with me too. And I, I got some of these, uh, Amazon had some of these little things that you put across the bridge of your nose and has little, they're plastic and it's supposed to help with your, uh, uh, with your uh, glasses not fogging. Uh, yeah. Okay, I think we're missing just one now, Alan. I'm still looking uh, for Donald. Greg and Donald. Uh, I think we have Greg. We have us. Greg Patrick. Okay, there you are. I mean, we can proceed, and then if uh, Donald joins us later, I can work it in. Okay, I think that, that I'm going to do that. Um, thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, I was saying earlier that Zoom has said to me that I should have had different uh, security procedures, so I'm hoping that uh, that people uh, don't feel it necessary to crash and disrupt the meeting. Uh, the super neighborhood has had these. Uh, candidate forums for a number of years now, but this is the first time, obviously, we've done it on Zoom, so uh, bear with us. Uh, uh, we just think that this is um, what was, we, we felt was kind of dangerous to have it to have it in person because there, are, you know, that COVID is still out there. Um, and, but so this is going to be an adventure uh, to, to have it, to have it online. So, and we, 
it won't be the same feeling as all, all of us being in the same place at the same time, but um, we, we think this is very important that we get the information out. Um, one of our uh, officers tonight, Doug Smith, uh, uh, Doug has bad allergies and so he's taken all kinds of medicine. He was supposed to be the timekeeper and he called me, he said, I, I'm drowsy. So uh, we didn't want him to be the, <laughs> the timekeeper. So I've asked my, uh, my son to do it. Uh, that's the benefit of having grown children, grown children. You can get them to fill in. So Brad Nelson will be our, our timekeeper tonight. And um, Alan Steinberg is going to be um, uh, uh, the, the moderator. Um, Alan is, is one of the co-chairs of the Ailey Super Neighborhood. And also, Alan is a, a civic leader uh, with a desire to improve the Houston community through education, advocacy, and civil, civic action. He serves as the president and the CEO of the West Houston Association, and he works uh, with industry leaders who collaborate, educate, and advocate to improve the quality of life uh, and, and the experiences and opportunities for the two million plus, believe it or not, people who live, work, and play in this uh, great, uh, greater West Houston region. He's uh, on the board of directors of a number of um, organizations, including the Memorial Management District, Plant It Forward Farms, Keep Houston Beautiful, and Leadership Houston. And what we like the best is that Alan actually lives in a leaf and uh, he attended a leaf schools and he's vice chair for the Ailey Super Neighborhood Council. So, so Alan, take it away, thanks. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you all to the candidates that are here today. Uh, if y'all don't mind, I'm gonna keep it a little informal and use your first names when talking to you and about you. Um, what we'll do with this is I have a series of questions. Believe it or not, I'm gonna keep it to five questions. We have that many people, that many candidates. Um, most questions will have a two minute uh, warning or two minute total time. So for every question, uh, questions one through five, two minute maximum response. So we wanted to give you enough time that you can have a, a full and clear answer. But given the fact that there is potentially seven of you talking, uh, we didn't want to take 30 minutes per question. So hopefully we can wrap this up in between 60 to 90 minutes. And we appreciate you being here. I apologize. Uh, I'm a pastor and I I have a service tonight, a normal service at seven o'clock, but I wanted to come on and just stay as long as I possibly could. So uh, forgive me, I will have to leave. I cannot get out of that, okay? No problem, thank you. So we'll go ahead and get it kicked off with um, the first question being, tell us kind of who you are and why you're running. And uh, Pastor Greg, if you wanna go ahead and start off, feel free. You have two well, minutes. I'm Greg Patrick. I've been a, a resident of Ailey since 1981. Uh, I've been in this community for 40 years. And uh, I'm just very uh, happy to not only be a part of Ailey, but I've been happy to serve Ailey in a number of areas, a number of ways. Over the years, uh, we certainly have uh, been active in the community, uh, providing and uh, doing things for the community. And whenever there have been disasters, working closely with each and every uh, superintendent that has been available. Uh, many of you do know that we do work with the various schools as well and aiding them to do and achieve certain purposes. But over the years, it's just been a pleasure working with uh, the ALIF community. And I've just seen some areas where I think that we can do some improvements and I'm going to be working very closely uh, with the board, I am a cooperative type of person, and I like to, uh, I do have my opinions on very strongly on certain subjects, and uh, those, uh, those things, I'll make my opinions known. But for the most part, I believe in cooperation and working with uh, those that work with uh, in the community. Uh, just this past, um, speaking of Ailey, just this past uh, Thursday, we gave away almost $60 million in uh, help rental money uh, through uh, a few of the agencies, uh, Jay Malone and uh, the AFL-CIO. Uh, we were right here and we had over a thousand people that received funds, some of them before they even got home, they had the money. So we work with the community and to avert disasters and to try to help the community. But as far as the board is concerned, I'm there to simply bring some uh, coherence, uh, some peace, uh, cooperative uh, structure, and especially 
uh, try to get this bond issue passed. I am a firm believer that this bond issue will help the community. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Continuing with position seven, uh, Damon Brown, would you like to go ahead and go next and let us know who you are and why you're running? Absolutely, thank you. Uh, once again, my name is Damon Barone. I've been a resident in A-Leaf since 1981, uh, when Highway 6 was a two-lane road and there was only a stoplight at Highway 6 in Bel Air. Um, I was an educator in A-Leaf. My two children uh, go, went to A-Leaf. My son graduated from A-Leaf Taylor. My daughter's currently in A-Leaf Taylor as a freshman. I'm alumnus uh, from A-Leaf. I went to um, Petrosky, Albright, and Hastings High School. My wife currently works in the district as well in special ed. Uh, she went to ELSIC. I don't hold that against her at all. Um, and the reason why I'm running is to be the voice for the students uh, by the parents of our community. Um, that's, that's basically what my, my goal is and my stance is to allow individuals to have their voices from our community, have their voices heard. I'm a, a stern believer that that has not been happening. And so I believe it's time for the community to become aware and get activated in what's going on in our district, especially at the governance level. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're gonna to move to position six. So uh, Ronald Franklin, would you like to tell us uh, who you are and why you're running? Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Ronald R.B. Franklin. I am running for position six and um, I'm a father First off, I'm a husband. Second off, I hope my wife didn't hear that. But uh, I've been a community member for uh, in A-Leaf for the last seven years. We moved uh, back from Abilene, Texas, where I was very involved in the uh, school system as a, uh, a mentor. I do mentor now in A-Leaf. I've been a volunteer since we moved back here. Uh, I've been a strong advocate for the athletic program, part of the bond. I've uh, I realized that the key the key factor to keeping kids involved and off the streets and 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 that's as far as gangs and selling drugs and stealing and things like that is keep them engaged in act in athletic activities and I, I think that over the years we've kind of pressed them to the backside and just pushed to one side of of uh, of an agenda and parents have always said why don't we look like Fort Ben or why don't we look like Katie. Why don't they ever listen to what we're saying? That's why I'm running. I'm running to be that voice for the community members that are not being uh, allowed to voice their opinion. Thank you, Ronald. Continuing with position six, Jennifer Key, do you wanna tell us who you are and why you're running? You're muted. Still muted. Jennifer, you're still muted. There you go. All right. I'm Jennifer Key. I've lived in the community for 44 years. Uh, we moved here in 1977. My daughter, Sarah, graduated from ELSIC in 2000. My son graduated uh, from ELSIC in 2004, and they both uh, are married and have spouses that also graduated in Ailey. And um, I love the community. I've always loved Ailey. I volunteered before I worked for the, the district for 25 years and I'm still volunteering in the district. I'm a strong community supporter, a strong advocate for children, especially children who have uh, learning differences, who have special needs such as homelessness, um, those kinds of things. So I guess my biggest interest is supporting the students and the staff and being positive about my community. It's a great place to live and it's a great place to raise children. Thank you, Jennifer. All right, continuing with uh, moving up to position five, Randall Stewart, do you wanna tell us who you are and why you're running? Uh, good evening. First of all, I would like to say uh, thank you guys for inviting me to this forum. Um, uh, the Ailey Super Neighborhood Council does a lot of good work in this community, and I, I'm, I'm so very proud to, to live in the community and be uh, uh, 
Team Barbara, I call it. <laughs> um, A-Leaf students matter. And I say that even be before I say my name, and now I'll say my name. I'm Randall Stewart. I'm running for A-Leaf ISD Board of Trustees position number five. I said A-Leaf students matter because this position, this election is not about me. Not at all. It's really about the students. And I, I have been a caretaker uh, for students for over 12 years working in A-Leaf ISD as an educator and a proud educator at that. And I want to continue doing, uh, serving a much greater audience other than the 900 plus students that I have done so in my, in my school for the past 12 years. I have served on a lot of boards and commission over the years and many in leadership positions. Uh, and and also I have um, and 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 one of the main reasons that I I feel more so now than ever to to as they say throw my hat in the ring is because of our students over the nineteen plus months you know our students have suffered uh, it's been a difficult time. Thank you. <laughs> Continue with position five, Harvey Tong. Tell us who you are and why you're running. Howdy, y'all. Uh, my name is Harvey Tong, and it seems like most people here have been an A-Leaf resident for longer than I've been alive. Uh, I am 23 years old, and I just graduated from A-Leaf Hastings four years ago. I just graduated from uh, UT Austin two months ago, and I am the closest one to know what it's like to be a student. And the reason that I'm running for the ALIF, uh, ALIF School Board of Trustees position number five is because when I was in high school, I had no idea what the school board is. And, and when I learned about uh, the school board, I know that these people make decisions that directly affect students. And we have no idea what, what they do. And we don't even know about that. We just know that, hey, there's some people in these big pictures in the admin building, that was it. And I am a strong belief in education as well as post high school resources. I graduated from ALIF because of the resources that given to me, I was able to get a internship in high school professional internship and also get a full ride scholarship to UT Austin. And that all came from the ALIF ISD communities. And my, that's what I strongly believe in education. And that's why I'm running to make sure that students like me that get, they get all the resources they, that, that, that they can get. Thank you. All right, moving to position four. Uh, Debbie Pe Pepper, do you want to tell us who you are and why you're running? Sure. Uh, my name is Debbie Pepper, and I have been an A-Leaf teacher uh, for 29 years. I just retired in January and uh, taught junior high at Hollow Middle School and then high school at ELSIC for three years when we opened up those new ninth grade centers. And then uh, when they opened Taylor High School, I moved over there and I was there for 20 years. So um, I'm, I'm an educator and everything that I, that I feel comes from that perspective. Uh, the things that I wanna change comes from the high school uh, perspective. And Harvey, thank goodness that you young people are coming up and starting to take leadership positions. I'm proud of you. This is, this is exactly what ALEAF is supposed to do <laughs> is to Thank create, you, yes, create students like you. Um, I have ideas about change and I've had those ideas for years and years. And, and I have just been hoping somebody would be willing to listen to my ideas. Uh, I think that there are some things related to the high school that we should change right now. And that is the lottery system for the high schools. Every other kid in ALEAF starts out at, middle, at elementary where they live middle school or uh, intermediate where they live, middle school where they live, and then in high school suddenly they get jumbled. And we have kids coming from Gessner going across the district three and a half, four miles over to Taylor, kids right next door to Taylor moving over in a bus. And this bus system is just craziness. And I can see in my mind, we should be able to fix that 
uh, and it would it would save us money. So there's issues with money, and I think that's just the whole lottery system has lost its time. It may have served a purpose at some point, but not now. Um, I have other ideas that are coming from the teacher's perspective. For example, of course, we want to support the kids. There's no teacher in 29 years. I never met a teacher who didn't want what was best for the kids in their classroom. Are you timing me out? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Continuing with position four, Darlene, you like, tell us who you are and why you're running. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Darlene Bro, and I am running for uh, re-election to position number four. Um, I actually have my doctorate in organizational leadership with a specialization in uh, mediation. And I think all of that has truly prepared me to serve on this board. I have been in the, uh, lived in this area for over 26 years. I've lived and served in the community through um, various uh, nonprofits. I was uh, at the uh, YMCA, um, a Little League football, uh, cheerleading coach, where I really got to know the, the, our students, uh, our children in the community and their parents. Uh, my children attended uh, A-Leaf schools and I even was an educator. I, I say that I went from the classroom to the boardroom because I've held many pit positions in between. And it's truly a, because of my broad, um, I believe it's because my broad understanding of how organizations work um, and that I'm also very accessible in the community. Uh, people know myself, my family, um, and uh, I, I love the, the fact that I can listen to our, our students and our families and bring that their concerns to the boardroom. I also truly understand the guidelines in which boards operate and what, where the line of governance uh, stops. So the reason why I'm running is for that 40,411 students that we serve and the 6,600 staff that we serve. I'm running for them and um, and I truly believe that I am uh, the, the candidate that continue the, the, the good work of what we've been doing. Thank you, Darlene. Uh, are there any candidates who came in late that have not had a chance to introduce themselves? Hearing none, I'm gonna move to our next question. Our next question is about the bond. The bond is a major issue on the ballot for ALEAP ISD. And what we wanna know is if you support it or not, and why or why not? You have a maximum of two minutes, but it likely will not take you that long to answer. However, feel free to take the two minutes if you would like. Uh, I'm gonna jump around in the order to kind of make it fair for everyone, but keeping in mind, uh, Greg, that you have to leave, I will go ahead and let you go first on this one. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in my opening statement, I am um, in support of the bond. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that the bond goes through simply because I think it addresses many of the needs of the, of the students and the student body uh, and also the teachers and some uh, infrastructure that needs to be corrected as well. I don't think it goes far enough in certain areas, um, but it, as far as the bond issue is concerned, um, I am in complete support of it. I have been um, working with uh, HD Chambers and others uh, through the Pastors Alliance that we've had for over 15, oh, 14 years, I guess it's been, uh, and we've been working with them on it. and. Um, we are very aware of what it addresses and we've gone through it line by line. And I see no issues with the bond at this time. Although I, as I stated, uh, there are other things that are very important that must be addressed later on. But as far as the bond issue is concerned, I am, and last thing, uh, my children, all four children went to ALEAF as well. <laughs> all, okay, thank you. Graduated from ALEAF and HBU. Thank you, Greg. Uh, keeping in mind, nope, looks like we lost Mr. Baron Mr. Damon back in yet. No. I don't see him. Um, now here he comes. 
So for those of you who are unaware of kind of how the school board elections work, I just want to clarify that um, candidates run for specific positions, and so they're running against each other within those positions. Uh, therefore, whenever we ask a question of a, of a candidate, I will try to ask everyone running for that same position at the same time so that you can compare what they're saying, since those are the people that you'll be uh, choosing among. So since uh, Greg just spoke, I'd like to go ahead and let uh, Damon respond to the same question of the bond is a major issue. Do you support it or not? Why or why not? So Damon, the floor is yours for up to two minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry, I was kicked out um, of, the, of the meeting. But at this current time, I do not favor the bond. Um, we currently have $26 million. Uh, the district currently has $26 million, which they can use for most of the projects in which they're, they're trying to um, do. Um, I, I did support the bond the first time. My concern is that when I was on the bond committee the, the first time is that many of the things that we asked for as community members, we did not receive. We asked for a new uh, football stadium. We did not receive those items. We asked for a place where we could host graduations here in our own community so that we didn't give our money away to other school districts and also have to travel to other school districts to um, have graduation. We didn't receive that. We also asked for a place where we could host meetings such as this. Uh, that was what the CTE center was supposed to be for. They talked about how they were gonna have dividing parcels where they would open it up and we would have meetings. The community would be able to have meetings and that wasn't provided to us. So my concern is that one, we're in a, a pandemic. So people are struggling to pay their rent and pay their bills. So I don't think that it's proper to, to um, be looking to raise their taxes at this time. Um, so I feel as though that there's other pressing, pressing issues that we could be concerned about, especially if the district already has $26 million uh, aside that they could be working, for, uh, working with at this current time. Thank you. So I'm gonna to jump to position five candidates and mixing up the order. Uh, Harvey, if you'd like to go first to talk about the bond, if you support it, oppose it, why or why not? I went through live by live the bond and I completely support of the bond uh, because uh, well, I'll keep in mind that ELIF has been the lowest, has had the lowest tax rate in the entire uh, Houston. And, and, and the, the expansion of infrastructure as well as safety and increase in opportunities for students. I know exactly what is what it's like to have more opportunities as a student. And therefore I completely uh, support the bond. All right, thank you. Keeping in line with other candidate from uh, position five, Randall, your position on the bond. Okay, I am currently still studying. There are four different components of, of this bond. It's not just a bond, it's a bond with four propositions or four proponents however it is called, you know, there's the athletic upgrades, there's Crump Stadium, there's the buses and facilities, and then there's technology. And in order for me to make an educated decision on do I support all the components or propositions or do, or which ones do I not favor, that, all of that is still under consideration and I have not made a decision yet. Okay, thank you for that. Um, can, excuse me, can you, can you uh, ask everybody to keep uh, muted unless they're speaking? I'm, I'm here, do you, are you hearing some back? Yes, we are. Okay. Hey, Alex, can you please mute yourself or Barbara, can you mute Alex as the host? Thank you. Moving to uh, position six in regards to the views on the bond. So I'll start here with Jennifer. Jennifer, if you wanna tell us your, how you feel about the bond and why. I support the bond. And the reason is because in 2015, when the bond was passed, the committee then also consisted of community members who looked at what was gonna be necessary for the bond, What they would like to have and what um, would be needed in the next five to 10 years. And so as a group, they decided that and everything on the 2015 bond came in on budget, on time, 
and was completed well within um, the tax rate we had suggested and did not have to raise the tax rate uh, during that bond in 2021. My, my uh, uh, opponent was serving on that, the bond committee for 2021 and did a good job. The committee came up with lots of um, improvements that the district needed. And I think those improvements are important to us as a community, to us as a school, especially the safety issues and the uh, structure issues. And also, um, you know, the upgrades to athletic equipment and uh, the stadium, I think those are all important. The uh, bond of all four parts passed will only raise taxes $3.75 at the max. They will not issue all of the uh, bonds at one time. So that would not be on day one, if it's so, uh, selected, then we have a $3.75 increase. And if you're over 65, then you're not gonna have an increase at all. I think our community needs to be alive and dynamic. And when you have building going on and improvements in the school district, it improves life for everyone. It begins to help us look more like the more affluent surrounding the districts. So I support the bond very much and appreciate, I think we were told 2000 plus hours by about 85 community members uh, to set this proposal forward. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, also continuing with position six, Ronald, would you like to discuss your position on the bond? <clears throat> Yes, and thank you. And uh, yes, I was asked to join the bond steering committee for the athletic part of it, because that's what I've always been an advocate about. I've been an official, I've been a coach for many years. And what this neighborhood has been thriving for is better equipment. If, if you've ever been to a basketball game, a football game, a baseball game, and you watch the way the kids' face, faces look when they got off of their bus, and walked into a real stadium, which we, as a league, we don't have that kind of stadium. So when it comes to the athletic part, I am a hundred percent behind that bond. That part I am. The, the the performing arts, because I did play in the band when I was in high school, and the the, the lack of equipment that my son wasn't able to continue his band career because the school couldn't afford to purchase another equipment was heartbreaking. He had to learn three different instruments to play just in a two-year time frame. And, and that for those kids that, that, that thrive for instruments and being musical and all of those things, that's heartbreaking when, when they don't, when the district cannot provide equipment for them. So performance arts needs to be passed. I, I feel that the community is gonna struggle with some of these bonds because we have people who are not gotten back to work yet. Uh, I also worry about the fact that if you're in any kind of construction, you know, the price of things are going up. It's going up quicker and faster than you can ever imagine. And I mean, you got six to eight months worth the whole time right now on equipment. So if we pass this bond and we can't get those prices, we might be in trouble. So I do support the athletic side of the bond. Thank you. Moving on to position four, Darlene, would you like to share your views on the bond? Yes, Aleaf ISD has buildings that are 50 years old and older with the average being around 35 years. And thanks to our, but thanks actually to our facilities and our maintenance staff, um, you would never know that when you walk in our building. So my hat goes off to all those individuals who care for our facilities because they represent the extent to that which ALEAP ISD goes to care for our students and ensure that they're in an edu uh, being educated in buildings and facilities that reflect their value to us. And so as with any other structure, regular maintenance and updates are required. And even at times new structures need to be built to ensure 
optimal learning spaces and um, energy efficiency uh, is achieved. So being a, an effective board member should be also include being a good steward of our district's resources and our facilities. And so the bond process is a collaboration between the community and the district. And I fully support the work that they've done. So yes, I do support the bond. Thank you. Debbie, your position on the bond. You're muted, Debbie. Still muted. There you okay. go. I'm on now. Yes. I, I love everything uh, Darlene said, and she's absolutely right. We have buildings and uh, equipment and supplies in this district that can be as old as 50 years, and that's um, just got to be updated. And most of the things like Mr. Franklin talked about the school buses not being air conditioned and there still are some. And can you imagine that? You would not put up with that as an adult, not for a minute. Uh, it is, it's just uh, needs to be done. Everything on that bond has to be passed right now. Now I have ideas about things that we will build in the future. And I've been on this bond committee and I was involved um, on the outside of the last bond and supported it. I love those new K-12 centers, they're awesome. Uh, so I'm very much in support of this bond and I am a, obviously like you all are, I'm a homeowner here and I pay my taxes and this is not a burden. We wanna keep this district going uh, and not feeling like the kids are not getting what they need. Thank you, Debbie. Our next question specifically is to uh, let us know two projects, ideas, or goals. So kind of thinking through what you would like to see implemented within ALEAP ISD. You know, so what are two projects, ideas, goals, however you want to think of that, that you'd like to see implemented? I'm going to mix up the order again. And Debbie, since you mentioned you have things already in mind, I'm going to go ahead and let position forward. Debbie, go first. Okay, this is gonna seem wild probably to some of you, but I just think since uh, ALEAF has one of the most dense populations in Houston, dense, we're not all sprawled out. There's no reason for us to not use the properties that we have. And just for example, build three-story or two-story parking lots for cars. We can build the facilities, Mr. Barone, that we can have graduations in if we use the space we have more intelligently. I was a geography teacher for 20 years. We need to use our land and build up. This is what they do in every other densely populated city in the, in the world. And so instead of spreading out, which is what's typical happens in Texas, we need to start building up. And that's what I'll be suggesting for the next bond. So we can have our graduations right here in ALEAF instead of sending our kids somewhere else. Um, there's other ideas, like I said, the, the busing. I think that we need to talk about that. We need, I need to really dig into that because uh, for 10 years now, I've been saying, why are we making these high school kids crisscross this district in buses to go right past, for example, at Taylor, we had kids coming past two perfectly good high schools, at Hastings and Elsick, to come to Taylor. And we had real estate agents selling properties right next to Taylor, whose children had to be bused over to Elsick or Hastings. This is not the way it's done in any other place in the United States. It should be geographically divided just the way it is as the feeder patterns for the elementary, the intermediate, and the middle schools. So those are two of my suggestions for the future, something to talk about. Thank you, Debbie. Continuing with position four, Darlene, two ideas, projects, goals that you'd like to see implemented in ALEAF ISD. You're muted, Darlene. Trying to keep my dogs from singing. Um, so I, I would really say two things that should be a focus. Um, for us as a district. Uh, student safety and mental health and the critical shortage of our teachers. Many of you all have heard about the tragic event that happened today in our great state of Texas where there was a school shooting. Thank goodness there, there were no deaths, but it should not have happened. So that number one to me 
is a top priority. Uh, it was even a priority in both the 86 and the 87 uh, legislative sessions with multiple bills uh, addressing mental health um, and, and school safety. So I, I really truly feel that that, that uh, student safety and mental health needs to continue to be a priority uh, for our district. Uh, the second is simply the critical shortage of teachers. The key to any successful student outcome is an effective, well-trained teacher in the, uh, in the classroom. And so across the state and the nation, there's, there's a teacher shortage. It's not just an AD. Um, people may say, oh, te uh, teachers are leaving a -lead. Well, teachers are leaving the profession altogether. And so I think in, in uh, Texas and in a -lead, with their large population of second language learners and the, you know, the, our students with uh, learning differences, we are hard pressed to find uh, highly qualified and certified uh, teachers. Um, so I, I think that that also should be a focus and a priority uh, and a project that I would like to be seen as to for our district to focus on those two items. Thank you, Darlene. Moving to position five, uh, Randall, what are two projects, ideas, or goals that you'd like to see implemented in ALEAF ISD? Randall, you're muted. There you go. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, I, wanna sh I want to ensure that equity and equality is afforded to all the students and staff throughout ALEAF ISD. I wanted to, uh, I want to en enact substantial policies immediately to assist the academic recovery of, for all our students to catch up. I want to hear our students say and be excited about going to school. And, and my second thing is interventions, interventions, interventions. Let me tell you what interventions are. Interventions are pulling those class, those students out of the classroom that just need that extra, that extra working with uh, uh, trained people one-on-one -on -one and trans transitioning them back into the classroom to be on par to the rest of those, with the rest of the students. Interventions, interventions, interventions. I can't say it enough, it's, it's, it's needed. Then, and it's needed now, and it's needed in the future in order for our students to catch up. Thank you, Randall. Continuing with position five, uh, Harvey, what are, you, what are two projects, ideas, or goals you'd like to see implemented? My first goal that I would like to see implemented is to improve school lunch for students. School lunch sucks. And if you if you are, if you want to put the kid in school for eight hours a day, especially the athlete kid, you need to give them bad food. And and as school and if you can raise millions of dollars to improve infrastructure, why can't we have why can't the student have better lunch? Lunch is so important because that's when they take a break, that's when they hang out with their friends. And and seniors don't want to eat school lunch. They all they all leave school, they all leave campus because because it's up. So that's my first goal. My second goal is to invest in teachers. Better pay for teacher. We want to invest in talents. I work in investment and I can tell you that investing in talent is a good investment because we want to attract more talent here. Each teacher can change a student life. And I have so far, I've been so fortunate to have great teacher in high school that provide me so much, so many great advice. And, and mentor me through high school and through the entire college um, application experience. So investing in teacher and improving school is on my two biggest goals. Thank you, Herbie. Thank you. Moving to position seven, uh, Damon, what are two goals, projects, or ideas that you have for ALEAF ISD? Thank you. Two goals that I have for ALEAF ISD or, or ideas that I have. One is to <clears throat> improve communication, two-way communication. Much like when individuals were on, were on mute, it doesn't matter how great or how horrible their ideas are if their voices aren't being heard. So our parents and our community members and our students need to have their voices heard. Whether we agree with them or not is, is pointless, 
but what cutting off their voices and cutting off their avenues of communication is, is not acceptable. Uh, the last thing that I want to work on is involvement, getting more community involvement. Um, just like we've received, anybody that lives in Ailey, you received 100 phone calls, texts, text messages, emails about the bond. When was the last time you received the communication about the school board? Not ever. Those are where the decisions are being made. So I, I would open up that the district will be more open to communication and get us involved, the community, the parents, the teachers, the students involved in, de in the decisions that are being made at the school board level. Call out should be made for the school board uh, meetings. School board meetings should be live streamed, not just because we're in COVID-19. I've been asking for this for years. So when the pandemic goes away, we should continue to live stream the board meetings so that those who, who have two and three jobs can be involved in and, and aware of the decisions that's being made in our community. Uh, stop telling individuals what the information is and advise them where to get the information. Don't tell me that the kids are doing well. Where can I go on the TEA website to find this information for myself? Where can I go on the district website? Show me. They do presentations at the school board meetings and they tell us that things are on the website, but they never present that information to us in their presentation on the website. I've asked them to pull that information up. So if we stop telling the community things and start showing them things and get them involved in at least getting their voices heard, I think a lot of the, the decisions or the things that I desire to change will manifest. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Greg, I'm not sure if you're there, but I do want to give you an opportunity as the other candidate for position seven. I'll give you a few seconds to see if you're there. not, I will move on to candidates for position six in regards to the same question. All right. So Ronald, the question to you, uh, what are two projects, ideas, or goals you would like to see implemented in ALEAF ISD? All right, thank you. That's, that's a good question. That's what's been asked many a times from people that I've been talking to in the community. The first one that I think is the most important one is one that we have not done as of today, and that is close that gap from last year. You hear them talk about it in board meetings all the time about what they can do. They got all of this money here, but they never follow through. We should not be almost done with the first nine weeks or we're done with the first nine weeks and not even started that process. I mean, I've heard from teachers, I've talked to teachers and they're like, we're having to do so much repeat work from last year and nobody's helping us. I mean, we've got to get that under control. I mean, next year is too late. I mean, it's already too late now. We've got to stop the bleeding now. The second thing I would really push for is to stop the lottery system. We are losing money, dollars, going to Fort Bend, going to Katy just because we have a lottery system. And, and if you're sitting there and you don't understand what that means, if you grew up with your best friend since you were a toddler, and next thing you know, you've been going to school for all these years in high school, you can't even enjoy the most important times of a, a teenager's career in high school by going to school with your neighbor, being able to go to the football game. It's, it, 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 it's simple. I mean, but you have to listen to the community. You can't say yes every time somebody puts something to vote. You got to say, no, let's stop. Let's look. Let's think about it. That is what we have to do. Those two things can make a big difference in our community. Let's keep our kids here, not elsewhere. Thank you, Arnold. All right. And um, our final person to answer that from position six, Jennifer, two ideas, uh, goals for Ely ISD. Lots of serious topics have been raised um, in the answer to this question. So I'm going to go in a little bit different direction. I look at the gifts that our students bring to Ailey. And when you look at Ailey, we have the most diverse student population ever. I mean, we have students from 82 different countries or more, given whichever day. And so I would like us to explore that a little bit. And how can we tie that identity and culture of an international district to the international district community and, and explore the opportunities to work on that together. We have students, we have the largest Nigerian population in the United States. 
more than 50% of our students now are from Spanish speaking countries. We have Vietnamese and Chinese and people from every corner of the world. So I would like to see that um, in conjunction with the international district so that we become known as that becomes our culture and our norm, sort of like uh, South Congress in Austin. We become more known, that becomes our name. I would also like to see our students connected more to professional um, opportunities in the community and around the city uh, through career and technology education. And I know that that um, department is working on that seriously and they improve that every year. But every student that wants to shadow a professional or to um, work in a profession to see what it's like, to see if this is indeed what they want to do as their life's work, they should get that opportunity in our schools before they ever leave us. So I want all of our students to, to be ready to leave us well prepared using the gifts they come to us with more than one language, which in a world culture is extremely valuable and Hi. Uh, Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, since clearly you, you you magically know what questions I'm already going to ask, I, I'm actually going to go ahead and start back with uh, position six for this next question. This next question is, Ailey ISD is known for its diversity among both the students and the opportunities within the school. These are both topics that people have touch, touched upon already, um, but I think it bears going deeper. Um, we would like to know your vision to ensure all students are career college ready regardless of which school they attend and their background. So thinking about that for a moment, I'm going to go ahead and just repeat that question so you can all just take a moment to think about it uh, again. So it's ALEAF ISD is known for its diversity among both its students and its opportunities within schools. What is your vision to ensure all students are career college ready, regardless of which ALEAF ISD school they attend and their own backgrounds? Uh, Jennifer, Do you want Mr. Franklin to go first or myself? Jennifer, I'll go ahead and let you go first since you had already started talking on that topic anyway. Okay. Um, I have been a, an advocate for uh, second language learners, uh, not only before my career, but that was the main focus. One of the main focuses or focus, foci of my careers was uh, English as a second language. And that is a huge gift that people have not always valued. Uh, my son works in Germany and uh, his wife is from Mexico, their son was born in France, and they live in Germany now. So a real international family exists right there. We need to take those gifts and make sure that all of the opportunities that they have to maintain not only their language, but literacy in their language so that they can communicate and work in their language. We know that Chinese is a critical language of the U.S. government. We know that Spanish speakers in Texas can have their pick of jobs if they're bilingual in Spanish and English. So we can use that. And we know that kids who learn more than one language perform better academically. So take those skills, make sure we, uh, there's a word for that, leverage what they already bring to us so that when they get ready to graduate, they're ready to go out there making good monies through certifications, through college degrees, um, through workforce experience. And we're gonna have to give them the skills. And I believe that we've begun that. I know that COVID has caused gaps that's gonna take more than one year to overcome, but we know that we have people actively looking at that so that we can address those issues um, as a group and for individual students. And career in college and military readiness is critical. That's going, I'm, I'm getting close to old age. I'm not gonna go there yet, but I want those people to know enough to be able to take care of me when I'm older than I am now. That's time, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Ronald, same question to you. <clears throat> like Jennifer said, diversity. I'm gonna give you a quick story about my family and we're gonna go real quick. My wife is Hispanic. My stepfather is Hispanic. My aunt is Japanese, which my uncle is a Japanese interpreter for the military. My other aunt is German, which my uncle worked in the Air, in the Air Force for over 35 years. So diversity is all around us. 
That's all I've ever known. The biggest thing that we need to do is to see if we can reach out and get some of these teachers from these different, different cultures, bring them in, invest in them, help other people understand. Because if we don't bring those teachers in, we're going to lose some of these students because there's a barrier there. We need to really emphasize that. We need to start offering these different languages at a younger age because it's known that the earlier you start, the more they retain. So we need to really make sure that we're setting them up for success. And how can you do that? One of the big ways is get rid of the lottery system. So that way they know you start here and everything flows. You might go to one school, they don't offer it there. My niece, she, she wants to take Spanish at the, at a, in the elementary where she came from, she can't do that yet. But if you go to a different school, she can. We need to start early and make sure that we're grooming them for success. And then if we start earlier, by the time they get to high school, they've already set up for success. Thank you. All right, we're gonna to move to position four for the same question regarding diversity of uh, students and opportunity. And we'll go ahead and start with Debbie in position four. Okay, I, I think I've got it unmuted. Um, I'm just looking at the group of people that are here. And, and it is remarkable that there is not one, except for Barbara, a Spanish um, surname here. And 50%, over 50% of our students are Hispanic. And that, that's just one, that's just one. Um, Harvey knows what it was like to go through school here in A-Leaf as a second language learner. Uh, this is a, a diverse district and we need to do anything we can to make these kids feel good because what I've learned from my 20 years as an ESL teacher is that they, they start to feel defeated. They start to feel like they, they, they're going to give up because there is no future for it. They don't see a future for them. If, if they're not going to go to university, well, then what, it, what is there? Now, we've opened up the Cape Center. That's awesome. Uh, but I've never seen very many people over there. I mean, we got to get kids in there learning those things. If they're not going to be going to university, we need to give them the skills that they need to learn jobs uh, and to become good at those jobs. Not entry level, but to become good at it, to be certified in it. Uh, so yeah, ALEAF is the epitome of diversity. It's something like Jennifer said, I've been living and breathing it in my classroom for all these years. Uh, these, these students need to be raised up and to make, give confidence, give them confidence that they can go out into the world, even if maybe they aren't going to go to university, but they need to be ready. Um, and, and instead of just feeling like they've been given up on. And I, I, I think that most, most teachers that I know have always worked hard to do that. Uh, so yeah, th this is an incredible um, diversity here in A-Leaf. And I, just like Jennifer listed, a group, I can tell you kids from every country, I think on earth that came to my classroom at some time in the last 20 years. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a great district for that. Thank you, Debbie. Darlene, same question to you from position four. So, and I absolutely love Ailey. That's why I, I really, literally love and enjoy living here. But it's more than just recognizing that we have a very diverse community. Um, I am an educational researcher by trade. And one of the things that I do is I look at educational data, data daily. And so I know that in, to ensure that we are setting goals and meeting those goals, we must look at data. I was proud to serve as the chair of the ALEAF ISD uh, Policy Committee. And so uh, through that policy committee, I led firsthand the development of the ALEAF ISD equity policy. It's actually, it's called AE Local. It's our educational philosophy. And our policy actually states uh, about our commitment to removing the barriers um, that would prevent any of our students um, and from achievement and prevent the district from providing um, every student from, with equitable access to high quality and value focused um, culturally relevant curriculum, instruction, resources, and support. 
Um, one of our priorities actually that was discussed in our board meeting last night was uh, post-secondary readiness. And it's truly, we talked about closing the opportunity gap. If we know an, a gap exists, it is truly, we, we know that there's data about that. So we have to keep our eye looking on that disaggregated data across all of our campuses to ensure that each campus is providing the quality uh, teacher, quality um, um, instruction and uh, resources and, and classes that is needed to ensure that all of our, our students are college uh, and career and even I'm... military ready. Thank you. All right, continuing with the, with the same question, we're gonna move to position five. All right, so uh, Randall, if you'd like to go first on this one again, the question is, what is your vision to ensure all students are career college ready, regardless of which school they attend and the diversity of their background? You know, as I stated before, uh, I plan to ensure that equity and equality is afforded to all of our students and staff. Let me point out one thing. Uh, I'm gonna call some professions, uh, people that actually work in the schools. There are custodians, there are teachers, there are paraprofessionals, there are counselors. And at a higher level, there, there are board members and there's the superintendent. We have one client. Our clients are our students. Those students come from some individuals. Those students come from parents. We got to form a true partnership with these parents and not only listen, but give them a voice about their children. We need to, we need to embrace our parents and, and, and form a stronger parent council. That's what's needed. Again, all of us would be without a job if it wasn't for the students. The students are there. They're our clients. And, I, and, and again, as I stated about intervention, intervention, it, 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 very quickly, is, is get that, or pull, as we say, pulling that kid out of the classroom with someone who's qualified to work with them one-on-one -on -one for them to, in order to make that transition back into that classroom. Our kids need that desperately. That's the gap that we, that is presented today as a result of the pandemic. Time. Thank you. Harvey, the same question to you. Uh, I will get a little personal onto this uh, this topic. Uh, my best friend, uh, Brandon, and I uh, graduated from Ailey Pasting uh, in 2017, uh, and then we both went to UT Austin. Brandon had such a cultural shock because he told me that he had never seen this many white people at the same place before. And as a young immigrant kid like me from Ailey, I didn't have that shock. You know why? Because of the Genesis Work Program that provided for for high school for uh, senior students that put me in high school to a professional firm in downtown Houston. And I was working professionally and had that, that, that experience on my resume that put me ahead of a lot of freshman kids in college coming from a -Liv. And I would like to, as a board member, when I get elected to board member, I would like to expand that program and ensure that more students like me four years ago get that opportunities. Thank you. Moving to position seven, so the same question, Ailey ISD is known for its diversity among both students and the opportunities within its schools. What is your vision to ensure all students are career college ready, regardless of which Ailey ISD school they attend and their background? Uh, Damon, go ahead. Excellent question. Thank you for sharing your story, Harvey. Uh, much like your friend, I went to college in Valley City State in North Dakota. I'll let you do the demographics on that. So I was like a fish out of the water there. Um, so I want to I want to read a quote from the Equity Toolkit from 2017 to 2019. 
where Executive Director of Human Resources at ALEAF ISD, Daryl Alexander states, ALEAF policies and procedures are implemented in ways that create a revolving door of teachers in high poverty, high minority and lowest achieving schools. With that being said, saying what needs to be done and then continuing to do what's wrong is the problem. So you state what the, pro what the problem is, but you continue to do what you already know is, is affecting our students' outcome. And I'll give you an example. ALEAF ISD has a practice of, of hiring teachers from Nebraska, much like me going to, um, to Valley City, North Dakota. Texas is its own country. We know that. ALEAF is diverse. Houston is diverse. There is no way in the world that anybody from Nebraska has the culture, much like Carvey's friend of myself going north to North Dakota, has the culture to be able to come in here and make an impact in a diverse uh, community that we have. So if we stop practicing uh, practices like bringing individuals here who aren't equipped, who are, have no experience with diverse communities to educate our kids, that would improve our, our student outcome and academics uh, as a whole. Um, so. With that being said, if, if Houston is its own country and ALEAF is its own country and Texas is, is its own country, why are we going outside of the state to bring teachers here to influence our community that we already know is 85% socially economically disadvantaged? And I, I think um, someone said we speak like 85 different languages here. So if this is your first time seeing a diverse population and your first time leaving your state, I don't see how you can be effective in educating our kids uh, when you're practicing on the job and, and getting socially equipped right. as well. Thank you. Greg, if you're here, I'll give you an opportunity to answer. Sounds like you're not. All right. The last question we have uh, will be a closing of why people should vote for you or Take the opportunity to say whatever you want. You have a maximum of two minutes still, and I will go down the roster uh, position by position, four, five, six, seven, in that order to make it easier for uh, those in our audience to know. And in between each position, I'll, I'll pause so that people can know the candidates for each position. So starting with position four, your, your closing remarks of two minutes. I don't know who is not muted, but I hear background noise of whoever can make sure everyone's muted who's not speaking. Uh, and then I will go ahead and let Darlene start this. You're muted. Yes. So I am uh, running for re-election for position four for ALEAF ISD um, school board. Um, really, I just want to talk about the things that has been accomplished since I've been on the school board. Um, one of the things that I've, I've approved one of the highest raises for our staff, not just our teachers, but but our staff, our entire staff, um, the rate that and um, and also implemented um, an, an equity policy, the first ever equity policy. Um, I served as an educational expert and, and um, testified on behalf of ALEAF students um, in Austin um, and also provided, um, taken over almost 200 hours in board training to ensure that I, am, uh, that I understand how a school board member um, should operate. Um, I am, my, my nature is data, looking at education, you know, educational data. And so that is the talent that I bring to uh, our district. And anybody that knows me that has listened to any of the school board uh, meetings knows that I always ask about the data of our students. I care about the students' success. I care about our, our staff. And so, and I've also supported programming um, that um, that gives our students uh, access, such as Mandarin, the, the Mandarin Chinese, and so I've I've voted for and approved budgets uh, for our district and um, for me uh, running for uh, re-election for position four. You will see that I will continue to work hard for um, our almost 41,000 students and over 6,000 uh, staff members. Thank you, Darlene. Debbie. Okay. So, um, 
this is the last time I get to speak. So I'm going to try to speak <laughs> to a lot of the things that I want to talk about. And nobody has mentioned the custodians, but having been in the campuses for 29 years, right there with, with those people struggling to keep those buildings clean and beautiful and spotless as best they can, here's, a, here's something that many of you may not know. Our janitors, if they have an absence, if they're sick, if they if they can't work that shift, the other janitors or the other maintenance workers on that shift have to do the work. There are no substitutes allowed in a leaf, and I think this is this is a terrible, terrible thing to do to people. It puts the custodial work, the janitorial staff. Uh, always on edge. They're always running. They're always uh, completely covered in sweat. They're just working so hard and we give them nothing. We give them nothing, including a raise. And I think that they need it. Uh, secondly, talking about raises, um, I think that any teacher, this is something completely out of the box. The superintendent met me 10 years ago and said he likes people that think out of the box. Well, let me tell you, if you are thinking out of the box, you may think of ways that teachers can improve their standing economically by staying a teacher instead of moving out of the classroom immediately in three years and become an administrator or somebody working at the big house. They need to get teachers enough pay to become the professionals that we are. When we train new teachers in the building, not coming from admin, coming and staying and being in the building with those other teachers, learning, teaching them how to become teachers. We have excellent teachers in ALEAF. And again, I told you at the very beginning, my perspective right now is strictly teachers, but I have ideas about everything. Because let me tell you, I've been listening. I've been paying attention. I've been at the board meetings. I, I have an other perspective. And I'd like to have that position. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Moving to position five, Harvey, if you'd like to go first. Yes. Um, who are we have to remember that who are we serving? The students. And I am the closest to students that I just can't get in, 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 in this Zoom chat. I bring the perspective from students and connect with the parents. I, I'm here, I run to close the generational gap, the differences between the students and the decision makers of ALI ISD. And, and we, have to, we have to ensure that we have to in, empower the parents. And I bring the perspective of someone who just has been a student two months ago. I know exactly what students want. I know what it's like to be a student. And we need a new chance. We need someone who know what it's like to be a student to make that decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Harvey. Randall. I want to first of all thank the uh, Super Neighborhood Council for for this forum and for also inviting me. I I feel most grateful to be a part of it. First of all, I have been a student. I have worked with students for over twelve years in the system. I have the respect of students, staff, and members in the community. I know it's time for me to step up. I know it's time for me, as I have been, uh, uh, as they say, in the trenches. And now it's time for me to serve a greater role, not only to ensure equity and equality uh, is afforded to every student and staff in ALEAF ISD. I want to give a shout out to paraprofessionals and, and they have often overworked, not mentioned, not appreciated. Those paraprofessionals are those individuals that are in those classrooms that when teachers are not there, they become the substitutes, but they don't get substitute pay. They're still working as, as they say in the contract, doing duties, those other duties as a sign. But, you know, most of all, like I say, it's our, our clients are our students. Our parents are part of that 
configuration. We got to form a stronger bond. We got, we got to listen and we got to give those parents a voice. I know without a doubt that I'm the best person to serve in this position. Thank you, Randall. <clears throat> Moving to position six, Jennifer. Um, you ask why vote for me? I know and love a leaf. I've lived here for many years and I choose to live here. And it's one of the things my children after they were grown and gone from this community realized has, has been the most beneficial for them because they know how to work in diverse jobs with diverse communities. Um, I've also taken, I think uh, the last time I looked, it was about 180 hours of training on how to be a school board member. So I've learned about the job. What you see at the board meetings is just a small portion of what we actually do. We get sometimes three and 400 page uh, board books that we have to study before the board meeting. Uh, we can't confer about those items before the board meeting. That's against the Open Meetings Act. But I have read those, those uh, board documents and I have done my due diligence to make sure that I understand what is being asked of me. I know the difference between a trustee's job position and I know the difference uh, from the teacher's position because I've been both. A trustee has five jobs in the district. They adopt district goals and set priorities and monitor success. They adopt policies and review for effectiveness. They hire and evaluate the superintendent. They adopt a budget and set a tax rate and they communicate with the community. So day-to-day -day decisions are not part of what a school board member does. And sometimes that can be difficult. I also want everybody to know that um, I have no personal or hidden agendas for wanting to be on the school board. I simply want to be an advocate for students and help build the best district that we can build. Um, and so I think if you vote for me, you're getting a known person who has experience and who has the best interest of Ailey, the school, students, and community at heart. Thank you. Ronald. <clears throat> thank you. First of all, thank the Ailey Super Neighborhood Council for holding this. Uh, I, I think that's a good thing. And I, and I really hope that we can build and, and get more people involved in your council because there's a lot of people that don't know about it. And we need to get that word out there about that. But voting for me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off with this new voice, new direction in business, in life. Sometimes you've got to go away from what's norm, what's been the same and do something new. That's why a new voice, new direction is a good thing. I will be fighting every day until I can't fight anymore to get this lottery system done. It's done. This is what the community wants. This is what the people want. The board hasn't listened to those people because they say, hey, I don't even, I've not seen a board member in my school in seven years. Never seen them come around. That's what Mr. Harvey said. We didn't even know what the school board trustees were. You got to listen to the people. You got to listen to the people. That's what you're elected there for, to listen for. Them. I'm here to listen, but I want you to understand. We can agree to disagree. That's what it's all about. Listening, understanding, looking at both sides, you know. Things don't always go the way people want them, but we have to be there for our community. We have to be there for the teachers. We have to be there for the staff. And I always put those in two different things because you do have teachers and you do have staff. You know, staff tends to get looked over all the time. So I'm that guy that's there fighting for all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving to position seven, Greg. Uh... You're, you're muted. Greg, you're, you're muted. You're still muted. There you go. Nope, oh, nope. You, there you go. I actually did not hear the question that was given. Yep, sure. Uh, so Greg, I'll, let, I'll give it to you real quick. It's uh, basically this is your, your chance to say whatever you'd like, whether it's uh, a closing or why people should vote for you. You have two minutes to say what you'd like or respond to whatever you've heard. 
Well, in the first uh, the first statement, I just like to say thank you for inviting me, and uh, I, I've enjoyed this. But uh, second, I'd like to say I, I did hear something before I left about certain things that I'd like to see implemented, and I wanted to mention I'd like to see some better technology, transportation, better infrastructure in the buildings and the older buildings that we were talking about, uh, getting those things improved, um, and also uh, just uh, attracting new teachers. Uh, we've got to get more focused on attracting teachers to bring them into the Alif uh, School District. That is very, very important. But Alif is a melting pot of people. We all know this. And we've got to begin to sort of uh, adhere to uh, certain things that the, the needs of the cultural, the, the cultural needs of the people are as well. So we've got to be uh, concerned about teachers. We've got to be uh, and their needs and uh, what uh, they uh, are requiring, not requiring, but at least asking for. I agree. Uh, someone said that, that, that we need to listen to the teachers. We must listen to the teachers. And, but mostly, uh, also, we've got to involve the parents even more. And we talk about this all the time, but we must involve the pay parents even more. Um, the school district is in pretty good shape, but it can be better. If you elect me, I will be working tirelessly. I'm a tireless worker to make sure that people get the needs, the things that they need. And I will be there. I will be there. I will not, I don't have a personal agenda. I have an A-Leaf agenda. And that's exactly what it would be, an A-Leaf agenda for me to make sure that A-Leaf gets the best. And I'll work with anyone to get that done. Thank you. Damon. Greetings. First of all, thank you, A-Leaf Super Neighborhoods for hosting this event. Um, very short and sweet. My name is Damon Barone. I'm running for position number seven, and my intentions are to be the voice for students by the parents of our community. Uh, it's time for a new voice, new direction. Much like any of these candidates that have attempted to speak and have been on mute, those have been the most painful 10 seconds, 15 seconds, five seconds that we, we've experienced. So now imagine being on the other side and being a par parent or community member and having your voice silenced by the district. I'm sorry. Very painful, that pause was intentional. So it's time for our community members and our students and our parents to have their voices given back. So much like we talk about these students, you can't be for the students and disenfranchise the parents. You can't be for the students and disenfranchise the community. It's time for us to start uplifting our entire community and have their voices heard at the table. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to take a moment to encourage all the candidates to please put your contact information in the chat. That way, if there's anyone here that would like to follow up with you, uh, if you have a, a website or a Facebook, some way people can learn more information about you or want to reach out to you one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I want to make sure that the people in the audience have that opportunity and have your information. So if you could each just, just take a moment and put that in the chat for people so they can kind of find you uh, wherever it may be that you can be found. I'd also I, like to. I'm sorry, I'm not, I, I, I was going to say that I could also, once it's in the chat, I can also send, send um, uh, your email and or phone numbers out through Ailey's Life if that's acceptable to you so people can contact you. Anybody, anybody object to having their contact information sent out through Ailey's Life or next door? Speak now, because I'm going to send it out in the morning. Hey, you can send out my telephone number. I give it to all my members. Okay. Sorry, Al. All right. So uh, I'd also like to make uh, to thank the Alif Super Neighborhood, you know, for putting this together. And because they did that, they need two shameless plugs. Uh, one is that this coming Saturday, there's going to be a cleanup at Harwin Park, October 9th. So I'd like to encourage any of y'all to have the, the time and capacity to come out to Harwin Park. Uh, the Saturday morning and help with that. And then, as was mentioned by a couple of people, uh, the super neighborhood meetings. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd love to see y'all regularly attending, you know, win, lose, or draw with this election. Y'all are uh, people who are passionate and interested in the success of our neighborhood. And we would really like to see you at those super neighborhood meetings, the next one being on October 26th, Tuesday night. So more information about those events are on the listserv. If you have any questions, I'm sure Barbara would be more than happy to talk about the super neighborhood or either of those events. Finally, I'd like to thank you all for being respectful of, of the event, um, you know, people staying to their times. 
being friendly, not getting argumentative with anyone, uh, very civil. I think that's awesome. It's great. That's the kind of civility that we need uh, in government moving forward. And finally, uh, thank you for your willingness to do this, uh, right? This is an unpaid position for most of you. Uh, if not all of you, there's probably not much personal gain to be had here beyond really uh, making ALEAF a better community. And I appreciate, and I know many others of us here appreciate your willingness to step up to this task and to run for the school board. So with that being said, I'd like to give you back that five minutes. I'm gonna give Barbara the final word if she has anything else she wants to say. Well, I, I'm another advocate for shameless plugs. Uh, Alan has plug for uh, the October events. In November, we're going to have two tree plantings. Um, and the, it will be on, on uh, Kirkwood at Bissonette on the, let me get my calendar, the 13th and the 20th. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, but the super neighborhood has planted thousands of trees around Bayleaf and uh, global warming is real. We need to do it more. And uh, I am um, shameless about using child labor, which means Bayleaf school kids. Uh, there is no way uh, that we could have accomplished anything. The community garden, the, the tree plantings, um, the, the cleanups without A-Leaf kids. And, and they've been doing it for years. Uh, and she will work you to death in watering those trees. <laughs> that's my son. That's my son chiming in because I used to make the kids, my kids do it too. Um, A-Leaf kids are, uh, they've done, they, they, they are working most of the time for community service and hopefully it sticks that, 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 that they keep coming back to these things. So uh, I'm gonna use them for tree planting. We, all, we can always use uh, adult um, supervision. I'm getting too old to be out there. So I'm looking at you younger folks. Uh, another thing I wanna to toot our horn a little bit in this spring, probably about April, we got a $60 million building being, being built at the corner of Bel Air and Kirkwood. And that's because the Aleph Super Neighborhood kept at it. By the time it gets built, 22 years, 22 years since we started asking for it. So uh, with that, uh, I echo um, Alan's uh, request. If, if you come to our meetings, we, we need everybody that we can get. We need diverse opinions and, and advice. And I, I uh, also thank you for doing this. I know it's a thankless job and uh, I appreciate all of you. So thank you very much and good night. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Have a good evening. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you thank to you. everyone. Thank you, Barbara. Thank, thank, thank you, you all. Cynthia. <laughs> Thanks.